people want to buy your products when they can relate to you once i started focusing on advertising my business that is really when i started seeing the change i feel like the reason my business is so successful is because i want black women to grow their hair yes i want to make money but i also want black women to grow their hair Welcome back to my channel and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I grew a six-figure business in only six months. So before we get started, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, put your notification bell on so you don't miss the rest of Vlogmas. We're so close to being done. Also, make sure you check out my Instagram and TikTok for daily content and check out my hair care products. They're all sold out right now, but they will be restocked on December 30th, so don't miss out. And I also know y'all gonna ask about the deets on my hair, so if you wanna know how I got these super cute heatless curls, go check out my previous video. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so I started my business in June of 2021. So I've had my business for about a year and a half, but I would say really um, the past six months when I decided to go full-time with my business It's just really been up from there. That's when I really started seeing all the sales started seeing all the orders Started seeing just the increase in my business overall was just in the past six months So when I first started my business, um, it was because of my following it was because of my audience So if you guys don't know I first started on TikTok I have a huge following on my TikTok and I remember in January of that same year So January of 2021 I went viral for my hair butter recipe and I posted a video it got like four and a half million views in a week and I got bombarded with people you know asking me to sell it because I didn't sell it at the time and the next couple months as I started growing my platform and you know I gained like two three hundred thousand followers I kept getting people asking me you know can you sell it can you sell it can you sell it and I remember being like I don't really want to sell it I don't really want to be a business owner that's not really my vibe or my thing you guys know that when I started my platform that was the year I also started medical school so like I never thought about doing anything else other than being a doctor but I do remember um that same year around March I want to say uh March through April, I started selling custom hair growth regimens. And I remember I sold it on this website. I think it was called PayHip. And I would make custom regimens for people. They would basically fill out a Google Doc and they would tell me all the stuff that's wrong with their hair. And I would make them a custom plan. And I remember that I did that. I made maybe like two or three thousand dollars in like the two or three months that I was doing it. And so I was like, wow, I'm just making custom plans and I'm making this much money, which was a lot of money to me at the time. Like, why don't I actually start selling it? Now, the thing is, like, before I started med school, I was living at home. So it wasn't like I could have the space or the room to start my business. But getting close to med school, so again, around June when I started my business in 2021, I had moved to my own place to start medical school. So I had my own apartment, had my own space, all that. And so I was like why not start it so what i did was you know i spent about two weeks researching everything you need about a business so i researched how to make a website how i do my business through shopify how shopify works all the ingredients you need inventory um shipping labels a label printer like all this stuff. i researched any and everything i needed created my website created my products created the containers i wanted the labels i wanted all that and and then i started selling it but like for the next year this is how i would run my business i would only be able to make products once a month so in med school you have like your all your tests like one one week out of the month and then you have like a weekend that you kind of can relax and then you start the next we had block so you start the next block of that semester during that weekend after i took an exams and i had nothing to study i would literally make all my products and i only had one product at a time which is now the original hair butter on my website so i only had one product and what i would do was i would make like 600 of these hair butters and like 48 to 72 hours it was the most exhausting thing i can think of but i would make them and then i would say i was in stock that week and then i would typically sell out within four or five days by doing that i was able to you know make a decent income um you know I, I was making pretty decent money but the thing is because i didn't have time to do anything else with my business i couldn't really uh focus on social media i couldn't focus on advertisement i couldn't i just i couldn't focus on anything but because like i would only be in stock once a month like people typically want stuff more when they can't have it so it's like the hype really built up over that restock date that i would set every single month and then i would just sell out in a couple of days because my products weren't available all the time so 
if you wanted to buy, you had to get it right then. So I would typically sell out within a week, max two weeks, and I would just spend that next week, you know, packaging orders and dropping off products. So that's kind of how I ran my business for the first year. Going into this year, so really again, like a year or so, June of this year, um, I left med school and I decided to do my business full time. You know, I talk all about that in my leaving med school video, which I will link somewhere for you guys. I decided to do my business full time. So that meant like going full forward. I really wanted to do my business and do social media like as my full time job. And I'm currently getting my master's degree in psychology, but basically I'm doing this full time. And so that meant that I had to have a different game plan. So this is starting the six months that I'm talking about, about hard with six figures it starts in june i think that's six months hopefully it is okay so i remember that the month before this um in may i did you know doing my regular once a month type thing with my business i remember that my sales were crap i say that in the month prior was the first time i was not selling products and selling out like that i would get like one order a day it was bad and i remember that I had to say that I was sold out during that month when I literally still had like two, three hundred of my hair butters. I had to say I was sold out because I just wasn't getting any orders and it was just wasting time. When I decided to leave in June, that's when I was really like, okay, I'm barely getting any orders. I'm barely getting any advertisement. I'm like, things are really bad. And I'm like, why did I decide to leave? Like, why am I doing this full time? But I really had to get a game plan. Okay, so the first thing I did so that really helped me grow my business is I expanded my hair care line. So like I said, the first year of my business, I only had one product. So going into the this time, I expanded my product to, I think I had six products, now I currently have eight. So the reason why I wanted to expand is because the hair butter that I was originally selling, so the original, that's what it's called on my website, it is a product that you can only sell in cold weather because it has no stabilizers, no water components, nothing. So if it is shipped in hot temperatures, it will melt. And because this is a product that's whipped, it will um, decrease in volume. So someone will get it and it will be like liquid and it will be like half full, right? And so that leads to a lot of complaints and things like that. Also the containers that the product is in, it is not made to hold liquids. It's made to hold like thick creams and things like that. So it has a higher potential of leaking and spilling and things like that. So I would end up losing a lot of, of money. I would end up getting a lot of complaints, having to refund people. And so I just kind of accepted the fact that this isn't a project I can sell year round. And I was like, I don't want to have a business that I can only be in business like four months out of the year. So I need to expand my line. And I was like, okay, so people really like my hair butters. <laughs> That's what I'm known for. So what is something that I can do to make this hair butter not melt? <laughs> In, in hot temperatures and that's where I discovered about emulsified hair butters I came up with that and so I decided to make three different kinds and then I also was like okay around the time that I went viral for my hair butter I also went viral not as much but still pretty good with my hair oil because I had always for years made my own mix of hair oil and people were also asking me to sell that and so again in med school I didn't have time to formulate or make any new products so I was like you know what this is the perfect time to finally formulate that oil blend in order to sell it as well so I developed two different types of oils a regular oil blend and an herbal infused oil I decided that June 15th which I think was literally the year anniversary of my business I decided to pop out with all these products the response was okay right people were a little confused people were like uh, I, I don't know too much about this. You know, I was getting some things, but I mean, I wasn't getting as many orders as I expected. I was getting more than I was the prior month, but not as much as I needed to, again, full-time, pay rent, you know, bills, things like that. I wasn't making enough money with my business, period. So I was like, okay, what is something that I can do to make people buy these products? And that's where I learned about bundles. So bundles is where you basically offer two products together at once, for a cheaper price. And so I created the best of both bundle, which is our oil blend with your choice of the silky shea or the creamy cocoa hair butter. And I came up with the herbal heaven bundle, which was our herbal infused hair butter and our herbal infused oil together for a cheaper price. And when I started putting bundles on my website, like that really helped a lot with sales because it's like people want, people always are looking for a sale. People are always looking for a deal. So if I had these bundles on my website permanently, not only is someone buying my product they are typically buying more than one so they're going to spend more than they would have 
normally even if it's at a slightly cheaper price so i would definitely say when i started doing bundles that really helped me see an increase in sales even though i had an increase in sales and this maybe went on for like two months so i say maybe july to august i say maybe from june to august this is all I was doing was just selling this and you know slowly but surely things were you know increasing and I was starting to get more attention with my business and people were starting to like dip their feet and try you know the new products that I had and people were coming back with great responses and stuff like that and of course I had to spend time perfecting the formulas and getting a system where I can ship orders and stuff but it was okay like I, I was doing okay then I was like there's still something else that I need to do for my business to like kind of push it to where it needs to go because this isn't gonna last my followers at this point they know i have a business at this point they know i have new products so basically this audience that i have for me personally is kind of tapped out and what i mean by that is at this point whoever is going to buy my products has already bought them and whoever is not going to buy my products is not going to buy them so like there is nothing else i can gain from my business with my personal audience so this is where i started focusing on building my business instagram i i cannot express to you how important that is once i started focusing on advertising my business okay that is really when i started seeing the change again Again, like my personal audience could only go so far I needed to build an audience of people that were following me solely because I was a business they knew nothing about me as an influencer they just knew I had my own business that's where you really start tapping into making the money so I would say you know the first couple of uh, months I was making like anywhere from 10 to 15k in in sales right so that was pretty good like over the past year me doing that once a month thing that's that's basically what I was making and then my sales dropped during that time in May and then they came back up to like my regular. So I went from making 10 to 15K uh, once a month doing my business like that to making 10 to 15K full time. Once I started focusing on building my business advertisement, that's really when things started to pop off. One of the things that I always say about having a business is you could have the best products in the world, but if no one knows about it, it doesn't matter. You won't get one single order. So for me, I focus on building my business Instagram. So I actually had my business Instagram from the second I started my business. Like I started my business Instagram, but I just never really focused on it. I didn't really post content on it. Um, typically if I posted something, it would just be a repost or something from my personal Instagram. Like it, I really didn't just put any priority to it at all. When I first popped out with my new products in June, I was posting more on my business Instagram and I saw that it, it helped a little bit, but like, again, I wasn't prioritizing. It was just kind of like an afterthought to post like oh let me just put this random video together a lot of the things that i was posting on my business instagram were just reposts from my personal instagram so it wasn't like i was creating content specifically for my business but i started to do that around i want to say august what i would do is basically i took the same approach as i did from my personal instagram so that means that i would use training sounds I would make very aesthetic clips. I would um, make videos that weren't longer than 15 seconds. And also I started posting like every single day. Like the same way that I prioritized posting consistently on my personal Instagram, I started doing that on my business Instagram. And through that, I slowly but surely learned the type of content and the type of videos and the type of things people like to see because you know, I would study why certain videos flopped and then study why certain videos blew up. I would study why um, certain videos got more comments and certain videos didn't. The same way that I did with my personal Instagram in order to grow it I did it with my with my business Instagram and so I went from I don't remember the numbers off the bat I'll put it on the screen if I can find it but I went from like two maybe three thousand followers in June all the way up to I think I have almost 25k right now on my business Instagram so I was able to grow like 20,000 followers in just six months on my business Instagram and when you have a large social media platform that means that you are always going to be exposed to people is you don't have to depend on you know a video going viral for you to get sales you don't have to depend on you know something crazy happening and, and you just getting a bunch of followers I didn't have to depend on my personal Instagram to grow my business that's really something that I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing because again when I was in med school I would literally depend on a video doing well my Instagram and my TikTok my personal Instagram and TikTok for me to get sales for my business. And I didn't want to have to depend on me as an influencer in order to make me as a business owner successful. I wanted there to be a separate difference. Like for example, God forbid, like if something happened and I was no longer an influencer, I still want to be able to make the same amount of money on my business. Like I didn't want them to be too meshed together. Now, of course, sometimes what I do is I will do collaborative posts. And that's typically like if it's just, um, I don't have anything to post on my personal Instagram or if it's just a video that I really want to get out there, or like a new product or something I wanted to expose it to both audiences but for the most part I really try to just do it separate now I have found that the type of content that works on my business page again everyone's different is that 
people like again short video aesthetic clip but they like when i show you know my long healthy natural hair in the first couple of seconds of the video and i'll say something like um customer dot dot and they'll ask the customer will ask the question like how did you grow your hair that long or if i say uh pov you're trying to find products for hair growth right and then i'll spend the next eight seconds doing uh making a product that's something that my followers really like is when i make products they want to see the process of me making a shampoo or me making a hair butter or me making an oil so i show myself making that product and in the last couple of seconds i will go back to showing my hair so that's something that really really worked for a long time i was just doing very like aesthetic clips of me like piping stuff and you know showing the nice cute labels and all that type of stuff and it wasn't working people just like you to be more raw and real and less like aesthetic and pretty aesthetics are important but that's not all your content that you you want to be presenting to your audience so they like you when they when I show like that. Also, another thing that people really like on my Instagram is when I do customer story times. And typically, again, I am making a product. Y'all see these a lot. Um, I will make a product while I am talking, doing a story time. Sometimes I'll talk in the video. Sometimes I'll do a voiceover. But, you know, just being real and being honest. Like, one time I did a video, I did really well, where I shared the way people have tried me as a business owner. You know, you like, you want to make your business more personable. Yes, aesthetics and, like, you know, nice clips of you piping things and showing you know your cute products all that is great but people like it when they can relate to you people want to buy your products when they can relate to you they can relate to your journey they're like oh i see that she used her products to grow her hair then it's more likely to work for me versus some faceless nameless company that you don't know who's behind it or anything like that it's a huge industry corporation it's less likely that that person's going to relate to the business in order to want to buy from it like again me being an influencer helps because people know me they know i'm real they know i'm transparent they know i don't lie they know i don't cap for a check they know i'm never going to tell you use this use one of my products and your hair is going to grow uh to your back in a week they know that that's not the way it is but if they relate to me they trust me they trust the integrity of my business and that's what makes them want to buy for me so i do my best to display that in the type of content that i make and and the thing is it's great because like i don't have to depend on my personal instagram to get me 50 60 000 views i can get that just on my business page now and that's really what i was trying to do that's my goal i will say that engagement and views is more important than followers but again having a large following for your business is is important so for me a great way that i have seen works with you know getting a lot of followers is by posting giveaways for example <clears throat> Today, I'll probably be posting something on my business page talking about a giveaway where I will give away a hair product on Christmas. And so the rules will simply be just follow me, follow my business page on our Instagram, our TikTok, and our Facebook. And that's an easy way to get followers. I've had some giveaways where I've gained like three, 4,000 followers just in like a couple of weeks off of giveaways. You know, people want to give free products. People want to enter and have a chance to win something that could work for their hair and help grow their hair. So it's a great way to enter. It doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't harm anybody. No one has to pay anything, but it's a great way to get you know a lot of followers and you're only losing like one or two products which you probably lose anyways from like a refund or something so just give, give it away also another great way that i have found to really grow my business is by doing a brand ambassador program what i do is i reach out and i'm like hey if you want a free product um apply you know i say i have a following requirement um i do it on instagram and tiktok so give me your followers on there you know tell me what type of hair products you want let me see your hair and for me i do that to just ensure diversity i don't want to just be a brand that only represents girls with loose hair and light skin that's that's good if i do that but i also want darker skin girls with tighter hair textures so doing brand ambassador programs is a great way for you know me to help smaller creators which i used to be and also get free advertisement for my business and the thing is what I do is I let them post it on their social media platforms, but I also ask them to send me a draft so I can edit the video the way that I want and post it on my business page so also get more views and engagement. All of this is just you want to build up a community of people surrounding your business. You don't want to be some nameless, faceless, again, cold like type business that has a wall and all they want is just money. I feel like the reason my business is so successful is because I want black women to grow their hair. Yes, I want to make money, but I also want black women to grow their hair. And I feel like I express that and I show that through my content and through the things that I present with my business. Like one of the things that I put on all my labels is you are fearfully and wonderfully made because I want black women to know that you should be confident in how your hair is regardless of what texture, what length, whatever. It's just about being personable. That's really it. And of course, let me talk about this really quick, the Facebook ads. I do pay for Facebook ads, but honestly, I feel like most of my drive and like attention that comes to my business is from my um, Instagram so and then the last thing that I definitely feel like helped me is um, changing the look 
of my brand. Um, this is important. Again, being personable is way more important than this, but this also has a factor. Like, you don't want someone to come to your website and then, like, click off because it's not aesthetic. You want a very professional and nice-looking website, something that makes them feel like they're buying something in luxury, like they're treating themselves. You don't want it to be something that they can make. You don't want your business to look like something they can do themselves. I want my customers to know, like, look, your products are going to look very luxurious. They're going to look very professional. They're going to be affordable, but it's going to make you feel like you're buying $30, $40, $50 products, even though you're not. Now, of course, my website, is not where I want it to be at all. I am still in the process of like trying to find someone to give me a new website, find someone to give me better product picks and all that type of stuff. But I feel like for what I've done myself, it's it's pretty good. But even then, you notice like in the past couple months, I've changed my color scheme of my brand, right? So I went from having these like white type of labels that were kind of uh, to, to nice black luxury like smooth clean type labels also if you guys didn't know i changed the name of my business when i uh relaunched a couple months ago so my business used to be called roses inches because my middle name is rose Brittany rose but then i was like no because what if i want to do things other than hair care like i don't know that could be anything that could be a skincare line that could be a hair care line that can be a you know a body care line there, there are so many things that you can do with that type of name and it just sounds better to me i wanted something that was personable to me that's why i keep the name rose but also something that can be general and apply to all different types of products not just hair my goal is to have a complete hair care line but i would love to move on to skincare and, and body care and sell bonnets and scarves and you know all this other type of stuff but yeah i just wanted a name that was more general everything that i'm saying to you guys i've implemented over the past six months and i would really say that my finances really picked up around i want to say like honestly like the past two months they, they were pretty consistent and steady for four months your goal for your business should be having consistent steady sales say that five times fast don't get me wrong it's great if like you know all of a sudden your orders spike and you get like 100 orders in a weekend but like you'd rather get 100 orders guaranteed every single week than be like counting on that like spike every single month like that's that's not a healthy way to have your business i had consist like i said i was making anywhere from 10 to fifteen thousand dollars in sales um uh, like for the past four months and then what really hit was around black friday and the holidays so like i told you i i have a video where i posted i, I shared that i made twenty thousand dollars um during black friday just that weekend and i ended up making about $35,000 that whole month of November and then this month in December I made about 30000 all my websites sold out because I don't have any inventory I wasn't expecting to get as many sales as I did on Black Friday this month but I did so that's kind of why I'm sold out because I just don't have enough you know products <laughs> to sell right now by implementing the advertisement by implementing you know changes expanding your lines like you know offering people products having a very aesthetic brand and mainly 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 being personable making people want to buy your product because they can relate to you is is very very important so i would say the biggest thing to get out of this is being personable and growing a platform all right guys so that's all i have for this video that is how i grew a six-figure business in six months i am so excited for where my business is going to go in 2023 i have so many great ideas of how to expand my business coming out with new products gonna have some help finally it's not going to be a one-man show and just like all these things that i'm just very excited about and i will say at the end of the day putting god first i was gonna give credit where credit is due god really like he he did that because when i left school six months ago i did not expect to be where i am now in december but he was like i got you and he had you if you have any questions definitely let me know leave them in the comment sections below also make sure you are following my instagram and tiktok and you can follow my business ones if you want all products will be recycled on december 30th so if you're interested just make sure you stay tuned for that all right guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye Tell me what you're seeing me